Many people have expressed the opinion that Dublin is becoming a bedroom community due to excessive residential development. What is your vision for the city of Dublin, and how, as mayor, do you plan to achieve that vision? And I'm first, right? Correct. I think, uh, I think we have, the best way to say it is I think we've built far beyond our capacity. Clearly, right now, our schools are impacted, and I think we need to, as a council, need to step up to the plate and slow development down. How that's going to be done is kind of going to be a very tricky set, set of circumstances because development that you may not be aware of is based on development agreements. If the developers come in, they have these agreements, and they run anywhere from five to eight to ten years long. The development we're seeing right now today was approved eight to ten years ago. We have a general plan. We have a specific plan. Uh, we knew that development was going to was going to go on the east. We all knew that. And at one point, everyone knows you couldn't go past Dublin Boulevard at, at Doherty. So we knew that was going to be uh, to that point. I, I think that we've got to roll up our sleeves. We've got to examine strategically, uh, allow and authorize specific housing, mi minimize as much as possible. We've got to do something because we're we are in serious serious need of. Uh, are reduced in the housing element. Uh, we also at the same time have our arena numbers, which means that we we have state mandated numbers. So we've got to obviously keep that in mind, which means we have to build workforce housing. We've got a serious, serious problem that we need to address. And I don't think we're talking about that. We're not talking about uh, the impact that the schools are having and having toured all the schools. Uh, recently, you know, we've got elementary schools and we've got middle schools that are, are peaking a thousand students and that's crazy. Just look at the traffic and the, and the sewer and the water issues alone are another issue. We've got to make some hard choices. As mayor, uh, I'd be pushing for a very slow, smart, strategic growth uh, platform uh, where we minimize the, the impact of the community as much as possible, minimize the impact of the schools, work with the schools in, in such a strategic way where we're going to uh, build only what we can maintain our infrastructure for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Ms. Hildebrand. Thank you. Um, regarding a bedroom community, I think that when we're comparing ourselves, I know the question was to something similar to San Ramon. San Ramon lacks an infrastructure that allows for their residents to find opportunities for recreation, retail, and commercial. It's very much heavily commercial, a little bit of a uh, little bit of retail, a little bit of com of, uh, of uh, recreation. What we need to do is continue to encourage the economic development here within our community in order to make sure that we have a successful, vibrant, uh, lively community. And so we need to continue to work to bring that commercial back that once was so attractive to Dublin. For some of you out there, we, you might remember we were once Digital Dublin. This is where the high-tech companies were looking to relocate. We need to re-engage in those conversations and maybe readdress. Is it high tech? Do we need to start looking at partnering with Sandia Labs, Lawrence Livermore, maybe look at ourselves as more biotech area or redefine what it is when it comes to our regional influence within this area. We have a very strong workforce here that is highly educated and can would love to not commute um, all the way to San Jose or into South San Francisco. So we need to re-look at how we can redefine that encourage the retail to come back in. One of the things that you do see, as Mr. Hart said, is you see the housing coming in. It is slowly and still continuing to build. It has always been planned for. We're lacking what is going to fill that in. You just see housing. However, we do need to manage that growth. We need to reconsider the density levels that we have. We need to reconsider how many more houses we can, we can accommodate here within this community in order to make sure that we don't have an over a, a overbalance of housing versus what we need here to make our city a more vibrant, livable community. Thank you, Ms. Hildebrand. Mr. Hubbard. Well, indeed, uh, everyone recognizes that Dublin is growing fast. We were the fastest growing city, or the second fastest growing city last year and the year before, just as much. Uh, as was mentioned before, the housing plan, or the, the East Dublin specific plan, was voted on by the voters many years ago, and much of what we see is the result of those plans laid out so long ago. However, we didn't recognize an increase in housing just yesterday. It's been here for a long time. You know, I'm going to say at least six, seven, eight years, and we've seen the explosion of housing. And when I got on the council, the first thing I asked was, how, when was the last time the East Dublin specific plan was reviewed in detail? The answer was never. 
I ask that we revisit the East Dublin specific plan, tear it apart from the all the way down to the brass tacks of how it was built, and build it back up again, and check the homework that we did the first time. Check the math. What did we think we would have, and what did we end up getting? I asked for a review of the East Dublin specific plan, and what we came up with was a commercial development task force, which is a great first step in the right direction. It allowed the residents of the community to come together to talk about what they want to see in the way of retail. It identified the need for pedestrian friendly retail, and it was a great step. But the first thing we need to do is review the East Elton specific plan, understand the original assumptions, and where we're going to go from there. I fa favor balanced growth. When I talk to the commercial realtors out there, they tell me retail follows rooftops. We have the rooftops. It's time to bring in the retail. We can do it, but we'll only do it with forethought with strategy, by looking at our original assumptions, by redoing the plan and understanding what we want to see going forward and how we can change it and going out and get in. I'm committed to working hard to doing that. I've already started in my two years on the council and I continue to, uh, to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harbour. Mr. Costello. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have been running for office since 1984. <clears throat> Each time that I try to run for office, and I get on the ballot, I say, each time, we're going too fast. This city is going too fast. We need to slow down. We need to slow down our building. Uh, me, as a, as a person in a wheelchair, I take my life in my hands every single day that I'm out there trying to get down the sidewalk because people <coughs> don't pay attention when they're turning right and I'm trying to cross the street. People, when we build our, our town, each time that we build it, we have to make sure that the places are, are affordable for us to live in. We have a brand new building in over there at the um, brand new bar station and I went in there and I wanted to move in there and they said you can't because we don't take section 8. I go yes you do no you no we don't and we were arguing back and forth and they said the city did not want us to do it and I go oh but I was told that, that you have a spot no they won't allow, when you're going to build a place for people to live in, you got to make it accessible for everybody to live, not just the rich people that have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Candace will now give you one minute for rebuttal, starting with Mr. Hart. Well, we all want a vibrant community. We all want like, economic development. That's, none of that is a secret, all right? The, the trick is to make sure we find that balanced growth. No other candidate talked about schools and the impact that we have on, on schools today. We need to be talking about the serious impact of our schools, all right, and the children. I mean, there are a thousand kids at the middle schools at both sites. There are a thousand at our elementary, at our elementary schools. We have to stop and slow down our building until at least our, our schools catch up. The only reason I, hope, I focus on that because it's our most important resource. Uh, when it comes to uh, the East Dublin specific plan, we all wanted that to be updated. All right, that's not that's not a secret that any one specific one candidate wanted. We all voted for that. It's important to, to realize uh, that we were forced and asked to vote on the rate of numbers. Twelve hundred more homes in downtown. I voted no. Four hundred more homes and for a green project, which I hope we'll talk about. I voted no. It's the impact on our schools, it's the impact of the community, it's the impact of our traffic. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Ms. Hildebrand. Well, I think I, I would like to go back to the question at hand, and was how do we not become a bedroom community? And obviously, housing is a very big concern, but I do believe that you have to balance that housing. And right now, we have an imbalance in our housing, and our retail, and our commercial. Uh, there, there seems to be an explosion of housing. It's because it's all we're seeing being built. It is at one point they were trickling in, pulling 10 permits at a time. What we see has always been planned. 
And over the course of that time with those development agreements, we also saw developers coming back, listening to the council that I sat on, asking them to reduce their numbers. They're entitled to a certain amount of numbers to build their housing with, and a lot of the times they like to go to the extreme. And we as a council have been making that message clear that we have to start slowing down and changing how we are growing when it comes to our housing. However, that being said, I truly believe that we need to start focusing on our economic and retail development within this community because we don't want to be that bedroom community. Thank you, Ms. Hildebrand. Mr. Hubbard. I'll reiterate what I said before. The time to revisit the specific plan was years ago, four, five, six years. It's time that we do it. I brought it up in a meeting and we decided to, to shift gears and go to a commercial task force meeting, which again was a great step. But I will reiterate again, and the record shows for itself, and the minutes will show, that we need to re revisit the specific plan in East Dublin. We need to do it years ago. We need to do it now, and that would be one of the first things I would push for. Thank you, Mr. Harbour. Mr. Costello. Yes. Um, speaking of schools, um, I, uh, I uh, part of the time that I was here, I spent 14 years going to college. That 14 years, I went to different aspects of of my, you know, radio, radio personality, whatever, and I saw that I wanted to be a teacher. I was a, a student teacher at the college. I taught computers, and I wanted to go to um, to the to the I and I go. I want to be a teacher. Why can't I be a teacher? No, no degree. They won't let you do anything without a degree. I tried for 14 years. I will still try for this city. I will not give up. I want you to have the best mayor possible. Thank you, Mr. Costello. 